All right. This is milkweed when it's flowering. When the seed pod drops the leaves, this is milkweed when it's dead. This is how you want it for your cordage. If you, uh, if you take it and you just crush it between your fingers like this, or with a rock if it's real stiff, kind of flatten it out, then take and kind of break it. This might be a little bit far gone. You just want it when it's fresh dead. But uh, see that fiber coming off? Right there, you pull that pith away from it, this, this stuff here. And then you take that fiber. So that fiber is what you want right there. This one's about dead, but anyway. See, that's the fiber you're looking for right there. It'll break like this by itself, but once you make it into a cord like that, it's strong. This is what it looks like when it's fresh, and when you break it, you'll notice. Let's see if I can get it to do it. When you break it, it'll start oozing milky looking sap. That's why it's called milkweed. And the sap is mildly toxic. It's got a lot of latex in it. But uh, that's what it looks like. The butterflies love this stuff. But if you wait until it dries out in the seed pods, like this, are on the top of it, when they're closed up, they have a, the seeds in them, which you scatter when you pull them. Okay? And the, uh, the seed, the ovum inside that the seeds are all attached to, you can spread it apart and use it to catch sparks from a flint and steel. So the plant has a lot of uses. It can be a fiber plant. Uh, the, uh, I've heard people say that they take the green seed pods when they're fresh and green before they dry out and boil them like okra and eat them. And uh, they're good for the monarch butterflies. They, it's one of the things that they do go after. And uh, they're a good fiber plant, kind of like flax. See how I'm making a cord? Mm -hmm. It's This is kind of like a Flemish twist on a bowstring. You twist it away from you, and you twist it back. And then you twist the cord, the fiber away from you, and you twist it back. And it binds itself. And you're using your fingers to pinch off that knot. And then you take something like this, where it was just the uh, fibers on the plant. And see, that's a cord. In fact, let's see if I can... I don't even know if I can get enough grip on this to... I can't even break that. And, uh... That's how you make cordage. And you can always splice in more stuff. Right here, you can put another piece and start twisting it in. And you can make this as long as you want it to be. And this is something you would make, like... There are people that make bowstrings out of it, very similar to a linen bowstring. Uh, there are people that uh, use this for fishing string, if you get it small enough, fishing nets. But see, it doesn't take long. That's four inches in about five minutes less, two minutes. But uh, and it's real strong. And if you do that, then you can take this, if you want a rope, and take two of these and double them like this. See, that's it, doubled. And you take this and you twist it. 
away from you. Let's see, I gotta do this one. Twist it away from you, twist it back. Twist it away from you, twist it back. Twist it away from you, twist it back. And see, it'll it'll bind on itself like that. So it keeps compounding. You could take this one and do another one. And you can end up with a rope this big around if you want. You can end up with a rope that big around. But it just keeps compounding it.